As a developer relations engineer here at Meta, I help developers bring their titles to MetaQuest. I had the privilege of sharing details about MetaQuest 3 at last year's Connect, and this year, I'll do it again for our latest headset, the MetaQuest 3S, which expands the Quest 3 family. I'm excited to walk you through a more detailed overview of the MetaQuest 3S headset and what you should keep in mind as you're developing for it and the Quest 3. This headset truly brings the power and performance of the MetaQuest 3 to a much larger audience by virtue of a lower price. With the MetaQuest 3S, we've taken most of the hardware of a MetaQuest 3 and paired it with the tried and tested optical stack of the Quest 2. The result? A high quality headset that can run all the latest high-end MetaQuest 3 titles while at the same time reaching the widest audience possible. So, who did we build MetaQuest 3S for? The Quest 3S really is for everyone. It's a multi-purpose device, delivering gaming, entertainment, and fitness experiences. Whether your app's audience is casual gamers or fitness and wellness enthusiasts, the Quest 3S is a great choice for them. But what about Quest 3? It's for the gaming or MR enthusiast, or someone who simply wants the best experience possible. Where does MetaQuest 3S fit in then? Well, I'll go into all the similarities and differences in just a moment, but one point to make clear is this. If someone has a Quest 3, they're set. They have the best. If someone is waiting to jump into mixed reality though, or to upgrade from Quest 1 or 2, the 3S might be the perfect device at the right price. Let's get into the device and development considerations. First, the headset itself. Performance, optics, weight and comfort, and battery. After that, I'll go into mixed reality. And finally, I'll touch on input. So let's dive into the details about the headset itself. Let's start with performance. The Quest 3S contains the same Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 and 8 gigabytes of RAM that the Quest 3 has. Why is this important? Because these are the key details that ensure that every piece of content that is created for the Quest 3 will perform the same across the family of Quest 3 devices, both the 3 and the 3S. As a reminder, the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 platform in Quest 3 and 3S represents an increase of over 33% in CPU performance compared to the Quest 2's XR2 Gen 1 platform. On the GPU side of the equation, things are even better. The upgrade from the Adreno 650 of Quest 2 to the Adreno 740 of Quest 3 represents a significant boost, more than 200% of the GPU processing power. As for optics, this is basically the exact same optical stack as the Quest 2. You've got an 1832 by 1920, 20 pixels per degree display, with a 96 degree horizontal and 90 degree vertical field of view. Just like Quest 2, you've got Fresnel lenses and the three-stage interaxial distance, or IAD, adjustment. However, the important difference to note here is that even with the lower resolution display, the Quest 3S still uses a default eye buffer size of 1680 by 1760, just like the Quest 3. It's the same resolution display as Quest 2, but it produces graphics that look a little bit better. In terms of weight and comfort, well, I'm happy to say we've held the line here. The Quest 3S at 514 grams is 11 grams more than the Quest 2 and one gram less than the Quest 3. In addition, while the Quest 3S doesn't have the pancake lenses of the Quest 3, the key element that allowed us to reduce the size of the headset so much, we were able to shrink the length of the headset by 11 millimeters compared to Quest 2, making it more comfortable. Then there's the strap. The Quest 3S uses the same style strap as the Quest 3, meaning that all the strap accessories from the Quest 3, such as the Elite straps, are fully compatible with the Quest 3S. One other detail to point out while we're looking at the strap. On the right side, you'll notice there's no audio jack. You still have the built-in audio, of course, and USB headphones work as well, but there's no longer a headphone jack. 
Bluetooth audio is an option too, and will be even better with the low latency features coming with the upgrade to Android 14 expected sometime next year. As for the battery, the Quest 3S falls right in the middle between the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 for size. Owing primarily to the lower resolution display, we expect roughly 2.5 hours of playtime on the Quest 3S, slightly more than you can get on the Quest 3, even though the battery is a little smaller. In addition, we've also removed the proximity sensor from inside the headset on Quest 3S. If you've ever ended up with an unexpectedly empty battery because something like the headset strap got too close to the proximity sensor, you won't have that problem with Quest 3S. Now, as for mixed reality, Quest 3 and 3S have the same 4 megapixel RGB 18 PPD color pass-through cameras. These cameras are in a slightly different arrangement due to the size of the 3S's optics, but they still make for a similar quality MR experience comparable to Quest 3. One other key difference between the Quest 3 and 3S is that the Quest 3 has a hardware depth projector while the Quest 3S does not. This actually isn't as big a deal as you might think. For both the Quest 3 and the 3S, we're generating depth data when needed via software analysis of camera images. The depth projector is mainly used in room setup to generate a little more accuracy and stability on plain, untextured walls. However, with the Quest 3S, we've added a new flicker sensor light pipe design. This allows us to more accurately detect the frequency of power used by lights around you, typically 60 Hz in the US and 50 Hz in Europe to reduce the chances of seeing light flicker during MR experiences. We've also added flood IR illuminators to Quest 3S. These are used when hand tracking is active to improve the illumination of your hands in low light situations, making hand tracking even better. In addition, one new feature on Quest 3S is the action button. Clustered with the volume controls, the action button allows you to quickly toggle between immersive content and pass-through mode more easily than the double headset tap shortcut from Quest 3. Finally, let's briefly touch on input. For controllers, the Quest 3S makes use of the same great Touch Plus controllers as Quest 3. However, it is important to note that the Touch Pro controllers do not work with the Quest 3S. With the Touch Pro controllers costing as much as the Quest 3S itself, we felt like this unlikely combination just didn't make much sense to support. Hand tracking and body tracking continue to work just like they do on the Quest 3, with the small improvement to low light hand tracking mentioned earlier. In addition, just like the Quest 3, the Quest 3S does not contain any hardware for face or eye tracking. While we feel both these technologies are important for the future, Adding them to Quest 3S would have made the headset less affordable and introduced some challenges in terms of content compatibility. So with that, we've covered all the major differences with respect to the Quest 3 and the 3S. Here's one more look at a summary of the differences. In short, all the performance of a Quest 3 paired with the optics and price of a Quest 2. So what does this mean for developers? Well, first off, we're not splitting the content ecosystem. Everything that runs on Quest 3 also runs on Quest 3S. In fact, we're so firm in our belief here that device targeting, the functionality we added to our developer site to allow you to deliver different APKs to different headsets, just has one Quest 3 family entry that covers both the Quest 3 and the 3S. Now, within your application, you can still conditionally branch your code based on which headset your application is running on. However, we believe those situations will be few and far between. In the end, you can feel confident investing and building for a higher spec, a more capable machine. With Quest 3S, more people can experience the best version of your content. So you might be asking yourself, now that Quest 3S is here and I can't buy a Quest 2 anymore, should I still be developing for Quest 2? The answer is, it depends. There are quite a few Quest 2 headsets out there, and we're continuing to support it. If your title needs to reach as many people as possible for concurrency, you probably want to support Quest 2 for as long as possible. If you need the compute or mixed reality capabilities of the Quest 3 family to ensure a good experience, 
we recommend focusing on the Quest 3 family as your baseline minimum spec. It's really up to you to evaluate your resources and then determine the device support that makes sense for your apps. So that's Quest 3S. This headset is part of the Quest 3 family. We're not splitting the content ecosystem or creating a lot of new development work. We feel this is the right combination of price and value for both existing MR users who haven't made the jump to Quest 3 yet and for those new to MR. In the end, it doesn't matter if you build the most compelling experience with the latest technology if people just can't access it. With the Quest 3S, you get both the latest technology and a large audience. I hope this tour of the MetaQuest 3S helped as you start considering your future development plans and support for the headset. Next up, we're going to hear from a developer who's doing magical things on the Quest 3 family of devices. Yasin Salmi of Salmi Games is going to walk us through how they maximize performance to render beautiful and optimized graphics. <laughs>